Quixent is a company very close to my own heart. Um, on and off, I've been involved in it for around nine years now. And uh, I was one of the founding members of the firm and for my sins, one of the engineers was responsible for some of its early technology. So what I'd like to do is take you a little bit through what Quixent's about. Quixent designs, develops, and manufactures computer gaming platforms for the gaming and slot machine market. So to differentiate from the Frontier presentation, which was on the, the consumer and video gaming market, Quixent is focused entirely and solely on the um, slot machine and gaming market in the pay-to-play -play gaming space. So what we manufacture is a computer gaming platform that's essentially PC-based, so um, technology that you typically see on any office desk or in your laptops or at home. But we add to that lots of... Um, very, very highly optimised technology, which makes that, that technology very suited to um, modern gaming machines. So the gaming platform in modern gaming machines forms the, the central heart of the machine, as it were. So if you look at the various um, accessories that you'd add alongside that, if you think about a typical gaming machine now, they've got lots of different ways that you can um, inter interact with that machine. There's a button board for playing the game, there's lamps around it, which give it, uh, it colour and, uh, and, and a dynamic appearance. Some have touch screens that mean you can actually press the buttons on the game on the screen. Um, now, and where we focus is on the video, um, video gaming side, or the video slot side, uh, rather than the traditional mechanical reels. And I'll come on to talk a bit about that in the future. And clearly there's other things like ticket printers and uh, bill acceptors, and more importantly, um, bill dispensers, which power out the money when you make a win. What the customer does is they add all of those bits to the machine that we design for them and, and manufacture for them, and they also write the customer's game. So we don't have any involvement whatsoever in the game development itself. That is entirely the customer's responsibility and, and will remain so. And you end up, here's one of, the, uh, one of our customers, that's one of their machines, and that orange box you can see in the middle is, is our machine. So, that is essentially the heart of it. That's what the customer's game runs on. That's what everything in that machine plugs into. It's essentially a controller for that machine. So if we go over and look at why we got involved in this space. So traditionally, um, our customers have done a lot of this stuff themselves. And why have they done it themselves? Because that's the only way they could do it. So what they often did is they bought a standard PC off the shelf from somebody like Dell and they put in some additional technology which they had to develop in-house, and then they um, put that into, a, into a, a gaming box, into a cabinet, and um, they spent significant amount of time on developing that, that computer platform, on sourcing the components, on actually doing the hardware design on it, and then they had less time, in their, uh, less, time and less money in their R&D budget to spend on the game development. Now, when you look at what differentiates our customers revenue from their peers. The key differentiator is game development. And what I'm trying to illustrate here is that whilst game development has the biggest impact on customer success, it had to take a second seat to developing the hardware and the computer platform. And this has been our sales pitch to customers from the very, from the very outset of the business, that what we want to try and do for customers is to give them a more balanced representation of their revenue versus their, versus their R&D. So, with Quixent, what they do is all of that computer platform is essentially a buying decision. Quixent is responsible for developing it, for manufacturing it, and as long as customers buy into this kind of philosophy and they buy into the product that we're manufacturing, the, the, it's, it's simply down to them to develop the game on top of it around the, the infrastructure that we provide them with. So what we've, what we've found on this is, is typically the, the, the competition that we face is not other, other companies doing this, and in fact, really in this, what's essentially a niche area of, of, of electronic and, and technology design, there is only one other company that we um, would, would classify as a direct competitor, and that company is, is actually the company that all of us originally were at and, and left several years ago. So really the people that we're facing off to are customers' in-house engineering teams, and essentially if we are going to have success in that customer many of the hardware engineers and some of the software engineers need redeployment into other areas of the business. And what we've found is over time, as the market's become more competitive and as they've had to become more profitable, um, what customers have done is they've not gone and had to lay off a load of engineers that they've obviously got loyalties to. What they've done is instead 
redeploy them into other areas of the design of the machine which are differentiators to their commercial success. But what I reiterate is game development is the key. What game development does is it gives customers the opportunity to address new tiers of player that wouldn't otherwise play it. It gives customers the opportunity to hold players on a machine for longer over playing another machine and that increases cash box and ultimately that is the key to a customer having a more successful machine. Quicksense operations are, are global. Um, we have uh, four offices around the world. Um, if we go to Las Vegas, USA, which is um, arguably the home of gaming, um, it's where it's been going for, for longest. And uh, we have an office there, which is a sales and customer support operation. And um, out of that office, we um, are responsible for selling to the North American market, but, but also giving customers vital support in, in developing our product around their game. And, uh, and, and equally the other way around, developing their game around our product. It's a very collaborative working ethic that we have. And, and that is, again, one of the things that you would never get if a customer approached somebody like Dell and said, will you help us manufacturing a gaming machine? Dell asks how many are you going to manufacture, and they say at the maximum maybe uh, 50 to 100,000 a year. And Dell are saying, well, we sell millions, so we wouldn't be interested in getting involved in that. So we are a niche player in a very, very large and very lucrative market. And this is where we saw this massive opportunity to uh, establish Quixent. The second office in Cambridge in the UK, this is a, also a sales operation, is our headquarters as well. Um, we manage the business out of this, we have all the financial functions there, and, uh, and, and also we sell to all of the customers um, outside the, the North American market around the world. Rome Italy is our, is our software and, uh, and, and gaming technology development <coughs> centre. We do a lot of the customer support from there for uh, the non-North American customers, but we also develop some of the, 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 sort of the more boring software that is necessary to run a machine. But again, I'll stress, nothing to do with the game itself. And in Taiwan, we have our manufacturing centre. Um, as a company, when we started off, we always knew that the only way that we could be competitive in this market is to have Taiwan on board. And we have one of our founding directors, who again, I've known now for 15 odd years, um, as the, he is the manager of that operation over there. So essentially, in all the key locations in Quixent, we have um, directors on the board that are representing those locations and that gives us a very collaborative working ethic and again all of us that have been with the firm since the outset have been together uh, in various different guises for many years longer than that. So wh where did this whole idea come out of? Well we were all working at, at a company called Densitron and we had uh, noticed that the gaming market was moving from the mechanical reels that you see on the top left hand corner to uh, video slot machines where the reels themselves are animated on a computer screen rather than being uh, mechanical moving parts. And that requires a completely different set of technology to drive it over mechanical reels, a computer screen. If you think about the, the typical technology that drives mechanical reels, you'd be looking at something that, the same kind of stuff that would drive a washing machine. It's something that is, um, turns something and stops it at a certain point based on some odds. The video slots are very different. They are uh, essentially a computer. And therefore, trying to, the, the same people that were good at manufacturing equipment for, for, for real based machines are not necessarily the same people good for doing video slots. So we saw this opportunity to specialise in this area and um, establish Quixen in 2005 to do that very thing. We, want, we, we had our first major business win in 2008, which was um, a company which is, is publicly known to be associated with Quixen, Ainsworth. Uh, Ainsworth is what we would call a tier two manufacturer. So we classify manufacturers in terms of tier one, tier two, and tier three. And very simply, that's not a reflection on the quality of their business by any means, but is a reflection on the number of machines that they manufacture per year. So um, there is a lot of headroom, and I'll come on to talk about that for further growth um, over and above our current revenue base. We develop all our products ourselves, and we established early on our Taiwanese manufacturing arm. And uh, we also, um, are responsible for procuring all of the parts that we, we buy for those products, and that is a very important part of the offering that we have for customers. So Quixent currently operates um, and, and has around 5%, we believe, of the annual replacement market. Far less than 5% of the total installed base of machines. There are around, we believe, 7.9 million machines globally in various different venues. That could be a casino, it could be a bar, it could be a, uh, a gambling hall, or a bingo hall, 
We only have uh, less than 1% of that kind of market if you look at it on that basis. But we, we generally look at it in terms of the replacement market. And we have, we believe, around 5% based on an industry survey that was conducted. So that means that we've got a lot of scope for the company to continue to grow. We've got a lot of customers to keep winning and we believe the organic growth opportunities are, are enormous. Another key feature of the gaming market, and uh, whenever I talk to somebody at a party and I say what, what I do, they always look at me thinking that we're the, the rogues that uh, con you out of your money. Um, whilst gaming has a bad reputation, it's actually a very, very highly regulated market in all of the, the major jurisdictions. And when I say highly regulated, um, every single part inside a gaming machine is open at any day, 24 hours a day, to be scrutinised by the regulator. And if any part is found to be different from what the regulator expected to be in that machine, they have the right to revoke that gaming licence for that manufacturer. And that is a very, very serious um, consequence for those manufacturers. These machines will typically take um, possibly around $25,000 in two weeks of, of, of profit. And if you think about it in terms of that, if their license is revoked on just you know, one machine, that's a significant loss. But if it's revoked on all the machines across all of the floors, that is a very, very serious problem. So how does Quixent help with that? Well, our product and our mentality is to ensuring longevity of supply and stability of supply. And that is very different from people like Dell, where essentially in two or three weeks' time, you might have a completely different Dell PC that you'd be buying compared to, to three weeks ago. And essentially, the sort of the volume consumer and, and industrial computer market is very much driven towards regular upgrades, reg regular churn, whereas our customers want stability. They want to buy a product, and they want to buy it for five to seven years. And that's quite an attractive prospect for us in terms of the repeatability of our revenues, because once they've designed us in, it's very difficult for them to move aside to another, uh, to another competitor, because they have written their game around our infrastructure. And that gives us a key hook for continued business with that customer. It also means there's a long gestation period to winning customers, but the benefit of that is that once we have them, we generally don't lose them. Just a little bit on the financials, um, we've had very healthy revenue growth. Again, all of this has been driven organically um, from around 5.3 million in 2010 to around 24.2 million uh, for the full year 2013. And that's translated through to, to healthy, healthy profit growth as well. Uh, profit before tax was just under six million in uh, 2013. Where do we see us going from here? When we when we spoke to the likes of Marty and we said we'd like to we'd like to float the market uh, float the company on the market, um, we're, we're quite a cash generative business. And, and the first question we often were ha often heard was, what, why on earth would you want to to raise a load of cash from doing it? Well. We have clearly got to continue to invest in our business, and um, all of the other people that, we, that have spoken to you today have, have, have explained why that's necessary to remain competitive. The, the other key thing for us is that um, the customers that we sell to are, are, are multi-billion dollar companies, and, what they, and, and going back to what I said around having stability of supply, they need us to be reliably, finan reliable financially. They need us to be stable financially. So having a strong working capital in our company is very important for us to continue to get sales. And the other key thing for an IPO for us was we needed status. We needed to be a company where our financials were transparent and they could easily look into that in depth and they knew that we had a strong profile within the investor space, both for um, the point of view of, of being recognised by many of the industry players, but also because um, lots of stakeholders at our, at our customers will look at us when they make the buying decision. And one of those stakeholders may well be the CFO, and if they've seen us in the paper or they've seen press about us, that does help our case in, in winning the business. Um, we are very, very heavily focused on winning significant business from a Tier 1. Um, there are several Tier 1s in play out there in the market and uh, we believe uh, the additional status from being public has given us a real uh, foothold in, in that space and we've already seen interest and uh, are, are hoping to be able to uh, tackle those, those major manufacturers which are uh, volumes larger than, than um, some of the major customers that we have now. Um, innovation is key. We have uh, several patents that we have secured and have got in application already. And uh, we, we see that as a, as a valuable part of the ongoing um, business development. And uh, we are very focused on expanding the Quixent brand. When I talk to the sales director about what his ambition is for the company, his ambition is to become the hoover of the gaming industry. So that when somebody says, I want to buy a gaming platform for my casino machine, 
they say I want to buy a Quixen for my, my gaming machine. Thank you very much.